Hey everyone, recently there's been a lot of talk about observers and the bad calls they made in games at US College Nationals a few weeks ago. For those outside the US who might not know, observers are third party officials who can make active calls on in out line stuff and can be consulted by a player for a ruling on a play. To be precise, just one of the players involved in a call may ask an observer to make a ruling on whether a call was legitimate or not. They can also issue cards when players do bad stuff. The foul call was rescinded. Harris won the race to the disc, and they call it dangerous play. And it looked like because Harris got there first, it was Rippy who bumped into Harris. Everyone knows that officiating an ultimate is challenging, and like players, observers get stuff wrong all the time. However, at College Nationals, there were some calls they got clearly wrong, which has led to some questions about whether we can eliminate some of the obviously incorrect rulings. We've also seen some observers come under fire for giving a bit more than just a ruling on a call. I, 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 okay, okay, now I'm going to ask you a question. Is that a traditional movement in ultimate? Is that how we're going to play this game today? Wait, I'm sorry, it's a violation of the rules, sir. Okay. Honestly, beautiful observer work. Now, I've gone on record before saying I don't like observers, and I could talk more about why I don't like them, but that's not what this video is about. If you do want to read a counter-argument to observers in their current form in Ultimate, I'd recommend reading this article by Benji Hayward which lays out the concept of game advisors before game advisors were officially a thing. The purpose of this video is to address a couple of arguments made by those strongly in favour of observers that I find contentious. The first argument that truly baffles me is the argument that even if the call is wrong, it's good that the observer made some call so we can get on with the game. For me, if a call is close and the correct outcome is uncertain, we can always just contest it and send it back to the previous furrow. It's really not the end of the world. The second argument is that observers make mistakes because they don't have the luxury of watching the video replay, and the obvious question is why not? This phrase is almost always said by a commentator who is watching a video replay, so the commentator can see what happened, the audience can see what happened, and the only people who can't see what happened are the players and the observers tasked with resolving the call. And we absolutely could put that replay right in front of the players. In fact, we have used video replays or photographs to make the right call before. Let me show you a few examples. Here the Irish and Polish junior players determines that the disc is down from the sideline replay. And that disc rescued off the ground. There's going to be a call for it down. A couple of players so crowd we'll around the little Minitron replay screen. I think there's an issue there where he does get his arms trapped underneath it, but in doing so, there's a bit where it bounces off his chest and hits the ground, and then he gets his arms there. Both teams are looked at the sideline, saw it on the replay monitor, called it down, let the players on the pitch know. His deep space and smug players verifying a line call was correct via a photo taken from the sideline. I mean, a valiant attempt. Here, Italian and Belgian players check that this disc was caught in bounds. And check out these two examples of retracted foul calls that Felix has talked about before. Firstly, Phil Garner opts to retract this foul call. Looking at the replay, despite the mark moving, we can see that Garner does throw into him. Having the replay shown in the stadium is useful for everybody. In a call later in this game, Loritz retracts this foul call on Ollie Gordon, seeing that the contact Gordon made was pretty minimal. Check out a more in-depth look at these calls in the video linked in the description. Really nice spirit there, in such a tight moment to say, okay, we've looked at the replay, you actually saw them turn to look at the Titantron, which is really good that players are now learning to use these facilities that are available to them. The obvious argument against use of technology is time restraints, and let's be honest, double checking the video replay might make the call take a few more seconds than usual, but for really important games, which film games normally are, maybe taking a few seconds is worth it. And from a spectator perspective, those few extra seconds are super engaging. Firstly, we're judging for ourselves whether the call is valid. And then we also get to hear the players discuss the call and see if they can come to a fair decision. That looks up to me. <laughs> oh, the magic of technology. Additionally, of the nine observer cards or rulings I showed you at the start of the video, we see the replay on the stream before seven out of nine of these calls had even been resolved so consulting the replay might not have even affected how long the call takes. Observers could have an iPad and be re-watching the play before they make a ruling, or even better, show the players the replay to see if they can come to a resolution without the need to go to the observer. The observer ruling is that it is a foul, because it's in the cut and it impacts its play on the disc, it is going to be Black's disc. Okay. Correct. It is an offensive receiving foul. Receiving foul. 
impacting his play on the disc. Therefore, this is not up. The throw was not up when the foul occurred. It is still a receiving foul because it is impacting his play on the disc. Therefore, it is a turnover. Alternatively, the mixing desk on the sideline could have a screen pointed towards the field, available for players and coaches to view. Some very important tournaments are coming up in the near future. We've got World Masters Clubs, World Games and World Clubs all on the horizon. Now as these events are WFDF events, there will be game advisors, not observers at the fields. All three of these events will also be filmed with cameras on the sideline to capture moments like these, which are pretty hard to call without checking the replay. Players competing at these events should know that WFDF does allow players on the field and on the sideline to use video replays to help make a call, providing it doesn't add unreasonable delay. Replay screens on the sidelines should be standard practice at major events, and WFDF should change the rule so anyone on the sideline can give their opinion on a call after watching the replay if asked. Let's try and make sure that no pivotal calls are resolved incorrectly at any of these major upcoming tournaments. Thanks for watching, see you next time.